on it, and I think it's a day that was terrible, but also showed the strength of the American spirit on how people came together. Uh, second is uh, thoughts and prayers for um, our distant neighbors down in Florida and also in, in Texas. Um, speedy back to their homes and their families. And uh, Amy, oh, another and item? And also, I had read that the tree warden, Paul Gleason, passed away this past week, so I wondered if the board might like to um, send a letter um, I was thinking of the appreciation. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we'll do that in sympathy to his family. Um, we will open the meeting with the public hearing on Saddle Hill Row Lots 1 and 4. But we will ask for if somebody can make a motion to open the meeting and adjourn the meeting. And we will finish the discussion on the uh, scenic wall violation. I'll Get make that. a motion to open the public hearing and suspend or continue the public hearing after the completion of the discussion of the violation of the scenic wall. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Uh, on for those of you who are not um, familiar with it, on Saturday, many members of the board went down and walked, when you come up, uh, and walked the, uh, the site and looked at three breakages in the, uh, the scenic wall uh, to kind of make a determination of, uh, or three openings, and whether it was actually a, uh, one of the his historic walls or not. Um, so I think the best thing to do is we tried not to have a discussion while we were there, um, is to maybe go around the table for those who were there and uh, see what your opinion is on the, the three openings, if it constituted a, if in your thoughts on seeing it, was there a wall there and did it constitute in your thoughts of a violation? Yeah, so I saw the three openings, and um, I think everyone agrees. Well, maybe not everyone agrees, but at least well, the applicant. The applicant I think the applicant had said that they, um, two of them were a breach, and um, one was approved by Jen. So uh, going on that, um, that's what I saw. I mean, that's all you can see is three openings. You can't really, you don't know the history other than hearing it from other people. Yeah, I would tend to agree. It looks like the, the first two um, that we saw looked like they were breaches, and the third one, I couldn't determine that there had really been a wall there in previously or just blue stone. I would agree that um, I saw three breaches, um, or three openings, shall we say. Um, the, the first two closer to Palomino Drive certainly looked as though there were breaches where the wall had been broken down and then rebuilt. Uh, the third opening uh, that was approved by Jen appeared to me as though there were there was a cart path, and I think um, in discussions with the with the applicant that uh, there was a cart path there, but it had been widened, and that's what I saw. Yeah, I mean, I'll just just add to um, what was already said. I think that one the one in question that was widened a little bit. It was initially probably 12 feet wide, and it was widened to was it 22, 23 feet when we measured it. 20. 23 is what we measure. Right. But no other differences <coughs> from the other two. Frank, can I go last? Want to go last? Ariel? Uh, so I don't have anything to add except that I was going to ask Amy, what was the dimensions on the first one you measured it? The first one that wasn't part of the discussion for the, what we were talking about? I took a photograph. I don't remember. 14.9. 14.9. Okay. okay. When I measured it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, my only, it seems clear from actually the, the uh, applicant brought photographs for us to look at before and after. Um, so it was pretty clear that those, and, and in that 14 foot nine spot where, which hadn't been under discussion before the stone wall had been reconstructed. Um, so it's clear to me that there are two obvious breaches and I am uh, fully 
uh, supportive and willing to accept the fact that the uh, developer had permission from the town planner, which was appropriate, um, to use the one bigger opening um, further, I guess it's south, further south from Palomino Drive. Yep. I actually fully second what Muriel said. I, I agree the first two openings that we saw appear to have been uh, breaches in the wall, but um, I do feel in discussion with the applicant and based on what we saw, they felt that they had permission um, from Jennifer to use that area. Um, and although I do think it might have been uh, disturbed a little bit, I think they were fully under the impression that they could use that area. Frank? So um, we had a nice walk on Saturday. Thanks for coming out. Uh, great representation of <coughs> the neighborhood, developers, and the board. Um, We didn't have all our photographs in place at the time, uh, there's some different logistical errors, but we, uh, we saw the northernmost breach, which was measured uh, at 14 feet, 9 inches, the central breach, which was, I think, 23 feet or so. Then uh, most of the uh, questions or concerns from the board about it are on the southernmost breach. And um, one of the neighbors there mentioned that um, the, the original opening was anywhere from three to six feet. Another neighbor uh, that wasn't there told me it was six to 12 feet. I remember it being at least wide enough for one or two horses to go through, um, but uh, that's not a measurement. That's just a, a ballpark guess. Uh, and then since there were some concerns about it, um, uh, uh, I can see some of the board maybe being less likely to want to uh, Include the third southernmost breach onto the uh, onto the uh, fines. Um, I don't want to include the whole southernmost area onto the fines because there was an opening there, and it would be un it's unfair to charge her for something that wasn't there for the opening. Um, but I would like to see uh, something uh, be added to the to represent all three breaches uh, in our deliberations tonight. And when we were there, um, I think it's safe to say from our measurements that at least six feet would be a fair, in my estimate, estimation t to add on to the fine for the southernmost breach. Uh, may I respond to that? Yes. If I recall, I think uh, the conversation, I don't know if Jen wants to you know, respond to this at this point, but. The conversation with the applicant was that they were given from the telephone pole to the tree. So regardless of whether or not it was a six or 12 foot opening horse path, I do believe that the applicant felt that they had permission from the town, from the town planner, to use that full space, which we measured I think was 33 feet if I'm correct. Um, from the pole to the tree was 33 feet. So I'm, yeah. I'm not sure I'm in agreement with fining them for you know, taking extra space if they were under the impression that they could use all of that. Uh, I'll just add that um, I, I don't agree with adding on that space that they had permission to use, just for discussion. Concur. I think it would be, uh, regardless of whether the uh, Jen had authority to grant that permission, um, I think the mindset of the, of the developer here was that they had permission and uh, I think it was permissive use and I think it's I'd be hard-pressed to want to penalize someone for acting believing that they had authority right. I, I agree with her fun yeah. David agreed so why don't we uh, if someone wants to make a motion if we add the two northern portions together what do we have as the square footage <coughs> And what do we have I, is um, the next? I, I figured it as 37.5 rather than 37.9 <coughs> times 300 feet is 11,250. Yes? Sure. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so 37 feet. Yeah. Does somebody, somebody want to make a motion based on the 37 and a half feet? Should we ask if there are members of the public that wish oh, to go? Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Applicants I, yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'll introduce myself. My, um, my name is John Parsons. 
To my right is Victor Galvani, my development partner. To my left is Paul Galvani, our attorney. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the planning board for taking time on Saturday to come out and visit the site. It was very helpful. Um, and I think that um, proceeding with the remaining lots, we, we have a different view of, of how in, in, uh, how to proceed in chronologically the steps. So uh, again, we recognize that those first two breaches uh, were not appropriate. And I'll turn it over to Victor. You can talk a little bit more. Well, yeah, so I guess, um, you know, obviously the last time we were here, we agreed to, you know, stop work. So, you know, from that perspective, um, you know, there's been a, a, a monetary, you know, piece that we've incurred by, you know, stopping the work. So really just at this point asking the board to consider, I think uh, you have the ability to find us up to $300 a foot. So there's some wiggle room or some amount of interpretation that goes from zero, which I don't think is happening, to, to, to 300, uh, you know, a foot. So I guess uh, we'd ask for some of that stuff to be uh, considered, you know, clearly moving forward um, during our site walk. You know, I think we tried to uh, agree that all of these are, you know, A&Rs. I think we want to be um, pretty sensitive here moving forward and, and are welcome to some, you know, input uh, from the planning board as we kind of progress through, um, you know, this is, the, uh, four of the lots, and uh, you know there'll be seven. Um, you know after that, and there's obviously other you know business dealings that we, we, you know we kind of have to work together on here. So um, from that perspective, uh, you know, we'll we'll be working together, and, and we'd we'll like uh, you know to consider uh, to consider that piece of it. Mr. Chairman, if I could also add, we are long-term <coughs> Hopkinton uh, owners. We own 35 Parkwood. We own 12 Parkwood, 25, 45 South Street. I mean, we're here for the duration. We like to do things right. This has never happened to us before, and we ask for any consideration when you consider the fine. Do you have members of the public who want to speak? If you do, if you can come up, identify yourself and your uh, address. I'd like to move that uh, the fine be the 11000 dollars for the scenic roadway violation. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Discussion? Discussion. <coughs> so 11,250 is the maximum amount. I mean, given the fact that they are, as the applicant had mentioned, um, if not residents here, they own a number of properties here in the town. This is a, a first time violation. Um, I don't know why we want to kind of stick it to them for the maximum amount. When they've gone in, they've made <coughs> some restitution to that. To the the wall. They yeah. fixed the wall. Um, I think there's a lesser amount. We still, I think we've made our point. They have not been able to do any work on the property for the past two weeks. Right? So there's a certain opportunity cost or a um, fixed cost that they've kind of incurred with that. So I'm more of the opinion to take it somewhere 70 to 80 percent of that number, not the maximum amount, as noted in the uh, proposal. David? So I would just like to agree with what Fran is saying. Um, they, they realize they made a mistake. They're willing to work with the town. They're going to be developing all these lots. And um, from the impression I've gotten with speaking with the applicants, they would be receptive to things like trying to plant trees in between lots to establish lots like that. So I would agree with uh, Fran that I, I think we should take a percentage off whatever that is just to uh, show that we're willing to work with them since they're willing to work with us. Can you give me those numbers that Fran suggested if you'd like? Yes. So 80% would be $9,000, 70% would be $7,875. Okay. So before what's, what happened is somebody's got to make a motion to there's a motion. There's a motion. A motion. No, but uh, make a motion. A friendly motion. A friendly uh, okay. motion. Okay. But if I can offer another alternative, mm -hmm. is to say uh, select the dollar amount, and I'd recommend the eleven two fifty, and use that money to plant trees along the public right of way in front of the property. So take care of. I'm not sure that you can dictate. You can't dictate fines. What? I think they go directly into the general fund okay. of the town. 
<laughs> well, that was a good idea. I thought that was a good idea. Creative. It was creative. If I could address some of the concerns of uh, some of the board members. Uh, I am happy that the applicant has uh, responded with these uh, four ANR lots with the plans, noting the stone wall and the trees that will be, uh, they're asking to be uh, moved uh, or replaced. And that is the law though, so that's something they're doing, something that they have to do. I don't see rewarding them for now following the rules uh, as being doing us any favor as a town because I think that the fine is the fine, it's a state law that our town has uh, a variation of that's a little bit stricter. Uh, they are in business in the state and they're in business in this town and something they should have been aware of. Uh, so I would like to see the, the whole amount uh, as moved be uh, presented as the fine. Uh, I also have gotten lots of feedback that, uh, and uh, from previous board members and from uh, some of the neighbors that the uh, fine is too low, and so that is what the law is. We we can't. Point of order, you know. though. If people mm. want to make their points, they need to be here at the hearing. Mm -hmm. right. Agreed. Well, that comes to the point of should I? Oh, some are here. Yeah. So they need to yeah, make their own point. Josh dies in Ross Saddle Hill Road. I just like to make a point about the scenic road. Um, a few years ago, when Eversource came through and chopped all the trees out of the power lines. Our neighbors left with a 12-foot stump of a tree. They literally chopped the top of it off. And it was you know, three feet off of the edge of the road. So they had to get permission from the board to cut it down. It was basically a 12-foot tree stump. The board gave them an extremely hard time because it was a scenic road. So the warden had to come out. They had to go through this whole process. It took about six months for the tree to come down. So as developers, They've worked in town, they know the rules, they should look up the rules. It's just like if I put a fence around my pool, I have to know that it has to be X amount of feet high and I'm not gonna put a fence that's not that high. So I think they should be held to what the rules are. Thank you. If you wanna come up and identify yourself and your address. Uh, Matt Kisner, 21 Curtis Road. I just have a parliamentarian question. I'm totally on the other side of this. It seems like a significant portion of the ambiguity here about what was allowed and what wasn't was from some mixed signals potentially from the town and the planning specifically. I'd like to understand that a little bit better before I'm comfortable sitting here listening to a fine. If it's possible that we were ambiguous about intentions or what was and was not allowed, you're talking about permissive use and what the developer's intent was. There, I don't particularly care. I care what the law is. Okay. There is no discussion and no fine being... Um, so can you explain for me then what the ambiguity was earlier because that was a significant portion of the debate. Because the question was there are three openings. Okay. Only one of the openings for discussion was whether they had permission or not and okay. that amount. Thank you. There's no fine being ascertained to that at all. Thank you. So, thank you. So, to the... <laughs> In a different life, wearing a different hat, what we used to do frequently when we levied fines was go for the maximum amount and we would suspend a portion of it. And that suspended portion would remain, you know, held off pending completion of the project. And if everything went fine, then it was, it was eliminated completely. Um, but if there were any more violations, then then the, the remainder would be become two. Uh, just to, I'm not sure if that's within our authority here, but um, it's an idea. And I would die on it. So 100% fine to spend 20% of it to. In use, essence, use, use Jen, it would be like a normal development that they put money aside that they would get back after the development's complete. I mean, similar to that, right? Similar, except so we'd say okay, we would say that there's a. Um, 100% of the fine is is assessed, and then we suspend 20%, saying that 80% of it would be due now. And so long as everything stays clear, that's all that would be due. But if there are more violations, then the remaining 20% is becomes due. In addition to any violation that would have. In happened. addition to any additional <coughs> violations, yeah. I think that's probably within the 
towards purview. Okay. Throwing it out there is an idea. Uh, I want to respond to that. I think it's a, it's a creative idea, but in my mind as we're looking at this, uh, ignoring the lower breach area uh, is that forgiveness, uh, is that flexibility, is not asking for the full amount that we could ask for. Uh, so in my mind, asking for the amount that I mentioned is, is a compromise, and I don't think we should accept anything less because it does send a signal that to other developers, well, we can, we can do this as well and just pay the fine. Um, a lot of feedback I've gotten, and it's like, well, and you ask a, a newspaper reporter, what are your sources? Well, sources. We're elected to represent people, and people, some people don't know where HCAM Studio is. Um, today I got that question asked of me. Uh, some people don't feel comfortable coming up and speaking at the microphone. It's, her point of, no. it's on the agenda, the address. Yeah. Sure, but some people don't know where the agenda is. So uh, have, well, uh, have, not have everyone's order. comfortable okay. coming here. Frank. Well, point of yeah. order, people do need uh, to find their way right. here yeah, right. or submit information um, if they want to consider this part of the hearing. Right. That's, so you, that's you're the not a proxy line. for people that yeah, don't show I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we are elected to represent people. And there was a person at the site walk that said, and I'm not sure how many of you heard it, that there was a contiguous wall in front of this property where the lowest section is. And in my mind, we're letting that part of, the, of it go. So uh, the person I, made the effort to get there. Okay, I, I, I think the, the point has been made, and I think there is um, the protocol is we don't have the ability, and I, I, I've, I've, we've discussed before kind of the, the idea of hearsay, that it has to be communicated to the board as a whole, either in writing or in person, and I do understand we have communications at times that people give us, but it's not something that we can present with authority because whatever we have to consider has to be presented to the board of the whole, as a whole. So um, I think you made your point. Um, what I would look at is does somebody, we have an amendment and a second for the $11,250 fine. Do we want to make a friendly I would make a, I would make a, a friendly amendment. And the amount? I would 80% of the original. Uh, the full amount, which I believe was $9,000. But does the person who made the amendment have to? Approve it. it. The person who makes amendment. the motion has to accept the amendment if it's just, a friendly amendment. Just a little more input before you make that decision, Fran. I would be in support of the 70 percent. Just my opinion. So I do, do I need to make that amendment? No, amendment? it's Frank who has to accept the friendly amendment. It's not saying to take the amendment. It's saying take the amendment and put it to a vote of the planning board. Uh, I have to reject that. 80 or 70. Okay. So we have a proposal and we have, so we have a proposal, we have a second on the 11,250. So I just want to, I'm looking at Jennifer, who has all wisdom of the board. If there is a vote on that and the vote is not in favor of it, can we then? Make another motion. We can make another motion. Okay, so. We have a motion. It's been seconded for eleven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So I would like to just speak to it a little bit. Um, I am very comfortable with the full fine. I understand that it's an imposition, and I appreciate that um, we want to be collegial and professional. Um, these rules uh, have been on the books and well publicized for a long time, and they are part of doing business in the town of Hockington. Um, so I don't look at it as being overly punitive. It's just a recompense for a mistake that was made by a professional party in town. So I just want to make it known to the board that I'm very comfortable holding people accountable the way that I would hold anybody accountable um, in the town um, for the rules and the bylaws and the regulations that exist. I would just like to kind of back on that comment. Um, while I'm comfortable at the 11250 number, 
um, I think it sends, it's a pretty stiff single. And oftentimes developers will work with developers on different ideas to beautify the surrounding um, lots that they have with things like sidewalks and additional trees. Um, it's a little bit of a branch back out to uh, the proponent, understanding where there could be, um, where they could come back to us with some additional ideas. So by addressing or looking at the 11250, um, I am more <coughs> of a favor of a working type of relationship with the developer, um, and that's my position on it. Mr. Uh, DeYoung, I, I would agree with um, you know what you're saying there. When we, you know, obviously these are these are A and R lots, and you know we gained access to them you know improperly by breaching the, the stone wall here. Um, we've you know we reconstructed it. Obviously, we have a driveway plan we're going to talk about you know tonight, or we'll get to that. But that's in a similar spot to where one of the breaches are. I'm, I'm not downplaying that uh, you know the the issue of the rock wall itself, but. Um, you know, we were able to, you know, recreate, you know, what, what happened there and, um, you know, we do want to, you know, you know, clearly work with you and, and work with you moving forward, but, um, you know, I think we accomplished a lot of that site walk, you know, through our discussion just from kind of feeling out what, what next steps are and how we can, um, sort of be good stewards moving forward. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I, I th just to agree with Fran, I, I think it's very important to work with the developers because this is an A&R lot, so I know these guys are nice gentlemen, they wouldn't do it, but basically they can clear cut the whole rest of Saddle Hill Road if they wanted to, and we'd have no say over it. So The whole rest of it. Through the chair, uh, Mr. Galbani, uh, some of you weren't uh, maybe in within earshot when he, he'd asked me a, a good, very good question, actually. I mean, very good question. Uh, how do they go forward and do maintain the stone walls? Uh, and he pointed out where the original Cape House is, uh, further down, across from the first lot. Um, very well maintained, there's no, no growth coming out of it, and it's kind of squared away even. And I just suggested, well, review the scenic road uh, bylaw, because um, I couldn't really discuss it there, but um, I think there are, there are ways that he is interested in making it look very nice and he's I know they're concerned about making it look nice but um, and I do appreciate that he wants to so uh, we're here to work with you guys and, and get you feedback when you have questions like that so. okay can we take a vote all in favor aye, aye. Um, Sorry, <laughs> what are we voting on right now? So <laughs> it's uh, fine, original vote of 11,250. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. So three opposed? No. No. Two, three, four. Four. Abstain. So it's not passed. So not I'd passed. like to make a motion. That we uh, we go with a seventy percent. I'll I, second that motion. A straight seventy percent. Straight seventy percent. Mm. I'd be comfortable with eighty. The motion on the table is seventy. <laughs> I'd luxury going first, but um, just wanted to point out that eight thousand dollars, if that's what it was, is still a substantial amount of money. In reply through the chair. Um, these homes are going to be close to a million dollars each, so you're talking pennies. What my thought was and why I abstained is I think the holding the funds in reserve, if we have that ability. Uh, That's not what he suggested. He suggested only collecting. Collecting. 80%. Right. right. Okay. And then collect the balance. Right. If there is a further infraction, et cetera. Yes. So uh, the reason I abstained was hoping that someone would propose that option. Um, I make a motion. Well, we have another motion. Has it been seconded? No. Fran seconded. Yeah, Fran seconded. Yeah. What's the amendment, Griffin? Um, well, the amendment would be that we assess the full 100%. We collect 70% now, and so long as everything goes on track and there's no additional violations, um, the 30% would be waived. 
would would that be wise or legal to do that? Because wouldn't you have to do it the other way, collect the whole amount and then refund the amount that at the end of the project? Hold 30 as a bond or something, hold 30. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering about the logistics. I'm not prepared at this time to answer that question. I'd have to check with our finance department so, on the mechanism for doing that. So that's, that's what concerns me is we're complicated and already complicated thing. I think it's a great idea, mm -hmm. yeah. but could we <laughs> Consult the council. Council. Not to make it no. any more complicated. No. Yes. Yeah. Let's make it. Let's, let's <laughs> not make it more complicated. Sorry. Thank you for the amendment. I, I thought I did, but I'd like to make a friendly amendment that we um, collect the straight nine thousand, which would be eighty percent in total. I mean, I seventy-five. <laughs> this isn't a bargain. <laughs> I can support eighty percent. Uh, others are supporting eight percent, and I would approve that amendment. Okay. Further discussion. Eighty percent straight. Yeah, you going? know what? Just uh, I love the idea, by the way, for the future. But I'd like the mechanism in place so we all understood right. it before we tried to do exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so. agree with Muriel that it, I really like the idea of giving them an incentive to not have any more violations. But if we don't know the procedure, then. It complicates things. The so seconder has to agree with the amendment as well. Oh, the seconder um, has to agree with the amendment as well. Uh, I would concur with the amendment. Okay, so the we have to approve the amendment and then vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to amend the fine from eleven thousand two hundred fifty to nine thousand, all in favor. So uh, I'm sorry, but you're actually taking his seventy percent to make it eighty percent. Well, what's the we 80 already voted number? down the eleven. We oh, already that's right. voted down the four. Right. So the seventy percent number is seven thousand eight seventy five, and the eighty percent number is nine thousand. Nine thousand. Yep. So on that, if all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So carried. What, Frank? Did you vote in favor? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. No, you're, you're right, because I, I actually... He's I just, quiet, I didn't see. I just nodded to John. Yeah. So the amended motion is uh, to assess a $9,000 fine. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Frank, I didn't see. Yep, that's a yes. I'm yes. sorry. Okay. So you now slick carry. Thank you. So can we get a motion to reopen the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So it's up. Oh. <laughs> to our applicants to actually um, uh, Saddle Hill Road, lots one and four <laughs> scenic road permits. Proposed removal of a 152-foot section of stone wall uh, over four lots within the layout of Saddle Hill Road for the construction of driveways to four single-family homes. Jennifer, why don't you uh, speak on what permits them to make this application? Um, so they have a large uh, parcel of land, as we're all familiar with, along Saddle Hill Road that has frontage along Saddle Hill Road. Um, they are looking to later on in tonight's agenda um, subdivide those lots as what we call a &R lots, which um, is buildable lots with frontage on an existing way in town. And they need to put driveways in, and this um, permit is required in order to remove the stone wall. And if there were any trees over three inches in caliber, they would also need that. But I believe there's no trees proposed to be removed at this time. Just a point of clarity before we turn it over to the applicant, Mr. Chair. Yes. So the the letter from that we have in front of us from David Dallmeyer breaks out the four 40 feet, 50 feet, 31, 31 feet, which seems to add up to the 150 feet that you said. However, the applications yeah, so, copies um, are much. My, my memo was written um, before they amended their application and provided additional 
So they've reduced, I believe, reduced the amount they needed. Yeah, because I think, can we just get those they numbers could, updated? They, they we, could speak to that. I don't okay. have it in front of me at the moment. Okay, great, thanks. Any question to that point? Is, is there a printout that I didn't grab yet, or? It's on here it's that in. I saw the individual. Oh, in your packet, you have the numbers the from the packet, so they're correct. Right, but my numbers are <coughs> wrong. All right, because it was a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to my right is Wayne um, with Waterman Associates. He's our engineer in the project. And Wayne, if you could maybe go over the uh, a and lots and talk in some detail. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Wayne Bell at Waterman Design. I haven't been before you folks, actually never before this board, but uh, Welcome. in a while. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All new faces. I haven't been here for maybe 10 years or so. Kobe's the, the, the same face. It's familiar face. <laughs> years ago, 20 years ago. Not to say how long you've been here, Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Bell at Waterman time. Design here to discuss the uh, four lots in question. And yes, uh, I did speak with Larry Green. I'm here in his stead. Uh, as it turns out, he does have a conflict tonight. And he did indicate to me that originally the, the throats or the openings to these driveways uh, were wider than shown on the, the modified plan and as contained uh, in the application. And basically what he had uh, earlier were uh, larger turning radii into each of the driveways, and he's now reduced it to, uh, to five feet. So just to briefly go over the, the widths of these throats and how much wall is, is to be removed. Uh, on lot one, we have 16 feet, lot two, 22 feet, lot three, 17 feet, and lot four, 19 feet. And speaking with, with Larry, he had indicated to me there was some criteria for establishing the locations of these driveways. Some of that he got from the DPW, which was don't site the driveways in, in proximity to hydrants uh, or catch basins. And obviously when we look at this, we do take into account you know, the scenic road uh, bylaw and the provisions therein. And we look at you know, the uh, minimizing uh, the removal of larger caliber trees. So I think as, as Jennifer had, had indicated, um, we were uh, conscious uh, with that respect. Um, the other thing that we look at is site distance. Um, so in, in these locations, we have adequate site distance uh, in both locations. Uh, and once again, as we leave the lots, one other criteria <coughs> is as you make your way out onto the, the Saddle Hill Road, you'll note that the alignment of the driveways, there was a conscious effort to uh, put a slight angle on them. And the reason being is that we do respect the, the houses on the other side of the street. And you know, if there is vegetation on, on the front of the lots, um, obviously that's gonna help with uh, headlights. But that's something that we always look to do is try to align the driveways so that they don't shine uh, directly onto the, uh, the houses on the opposite side of the street. Um, you will note in Larry's uh, exhibit here, one of the things that he's done too is rather than keep it a straight, uh, straight drive into the lot where you're standing out into the street and you're looking right into the garage, uh, he's put a, a, a curb in each of these, these driveways, and on the insides of these curves, he's provided vegetation. So maintaining a buffer along the, the front of the road and providing, um, for lack of a better term, street trees uh, along the, the uh, uh, inside of the driveways it, it helps to shield or screen the trees as you look into the lot through the driveway opening up toward the house. Um, in this particular case, in the town of Parkinson, there are requirements to comply with uh, with respect to the public safety officials' requirements, the, uh, the fire um, uh, emergency vehicles accessing the property. Um, they do have criteria that states that the paved surface needs to be 12 foot wide and that you provide a shoulder two foot wide and an earth shoulder to either side. So that, when you add that up, that's a 16 foot wide swath. So at a minimum, if you were to come in perpendicular to these access, to access these lots, you're talking a minimum of 16 foot wider uh, wall removal. Um, and looking at what, they're, what we're looking to do in, in removing these sections of walls, is we're looking to either return them into the lot with the, the native wall material, return them into the lot with a slight uh, curb, or create a, a stack type wall, like a, a pilaster type uh, arrangement on 
each side uh, to frame up that the, uh, the wall in that location. So that's basically it with respect to uh, the walls. And I would take any questions from the board. Is the fire chief here? I know there was some discussion on uh, site walk about the turning radius um, and and the minimum requirements, which I, I think you said is 16 feet. But I know there's some concern with Saddle Hill, Hill being such a narrow road. Is this, you know, do you have any Jeez. comments on that? Sure, so so far I've been able to take a look at two plans. Um, the town bylaw that I passed this year uh, that addresses public safety access um, looks for the developer, if needed, to demonstrate that the fire efforts can make the swing from the road onto the driveway. So um, part of all of our scenic roads, the challenge is the narrowness of the scenic road and the ability of our vehicles to make the swing. We, you know, we knew that's been in front of us. Um, I talked to you as a board uh, last year, the members that were on um, about North, uh, North Mill, we worked on a driveway with the owner, <coughs> and it, it was a tree that challenged us some and then an opening to the wall. So it's a horrible challenge that I present to you with scenic roads, but at the end of the day, my um, delivery of public safety, your expectation of emergency services will be that we can make it to the house and, and have an effective chance at certain operations at your house. Having said all that, um, the piece that I saw, so the engineer, I think that somebody had talked about wider openings. When you do a swept path analysis, they take our larger vehicles, they're larger on these, most of these scenic roads, there's no town water, so I have larger fire trucks that carry a lot more water. Uh, it's just part of the kind of snowballing effect that isn't helping with the challenge, but I just kind of explained the pieces to you so that you may know them. For them to make the swing, um, they have a piece of analysis, which is our ladder truck, and they, they would have to do some engineering on lots like this to show that it can make the swing or we can go into that day and I just actually do a test with the truck. The stone wall creates quite a bit of a challenge because it's not only the wheel turn, but a stone wall with our bumpers is a little bit of a, a challenge. That's why we, we add in that um, extra two feet of berm just for any swings, it gives us a little bit of room. And then, you know, there was a comment on the trees. I don't mind trees, but we gotta be cognizant that I need clearance. The vehicles are very tall too. So we have a, in our bylaw, we have a 13 foot six height clearance. So there's a square there that we need all these new lots to be thinking about so we can get at them. So I'm passing along that information. If I can offer you more, let me know. Um, Thank you. So if I can, uh, let me just clarify. So what you're saying is you don't know if the openings are wide enough to, yet to actually provide, allow your vehicles to have access. Yeah, my under, I, I did uh, meet with Chuck today and we kind of reviewed the driveways. It, 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 my understanding is the ones that are um, depicted here are going to be too narrow for my vehicles to make the swing. And they have another set of drawings that would meet the bylaw based on the engineering they get. I provide a plan and I provide um, um, details of the apparatus so that they can put it into a software solution that just shows that it makes it. We do that already with commercial properties, but this is something for one and two family dwellings and kind of to know whether we can access them or not. Mr. Chairman, yes. he raises great points. And again, I think what we have here, you find that a lot of times when you look at various departments, when you go before a board or a commission uh, with an application, there are conflicting interests <coughs> between, you know, bylaws from one board or regulations to another board. And in this particular case, I do appreciate the comments because, as he was saying, there is that swing radius. And if you look at these, these fire trucks, you really don't see it. And Chief, I'm not exactly sure what you have for a bumper overhang, but some of these are like seven feet. So as they maneuver that vehicle, there is also a drag on, on the vehicle. And what we have found, I'm not exactly sure what you run for, for fire apparatus, but many times what we find is the minimum turning radius. They have what's called a steer lock angle on these, these vehicles as well. But you're looking at somewhere around 38 to 41 feet. I mean, it's, it's fairly significant. Um, so, and that's the center line radius of, of, of the vehicle. 
what Larry has done in, in citing this, again, we're looking at a situation where we have a, we're applying for a scenic road uh, permit application, being sensitive to the bylaw, and then again, you weigh that to the concerns of, of, of public safety. With all due respect, I mean, there's no disrespect here, but again, we're looking at competing interests, conflicting interests. So you're, you're looking at, you know, and I think there's a way to do something here where we can maintain this, this character, but again, at the same time, address the, the chief's concern about being able to access the property. And I think you can do that with, again, uh, working the walls with, with nice returns or, or a nice pile aster um, as you enter onto the properties. It is, it is challenging, and again, when you look at the width of the road, inciting these driveways, we've picked the widest parts of Saddle Hill Road to help accommodate that. And again, it's, it's, it's still tough. How wide is Saddle Hill at the spots? It, so where we're, we're accessing the lot, so it varies from 16 feet to roughly about 21 feet. Yeah. So we're targeting those wider sections. And what that is for is for the, in an attempt to comply to the greatest extent practicable to your bylaw, while at the same time trying to meet the needs of, of, of the fire department. Again, when all is said and done, public safety is is, is key. Is, is key, and we, you know, I think that should be a consideration as we look at, at this. And I think again, there's a way to do this tastefully. If I can just to add that, because I have a question open, ask the, the two of you, is if you look at lots two and four based on the angle of the driveways. And I would take a wild guess that the fire trucks are coming north uh, coming north on Saddle Hill rather from than the opposite direction. It would appear that it would be easier to access one and three and you'd need, it would be more difficult to access two and four. That's correct. So one of the questions that I would, because I think just get the discussion going, is that, you know, is it possible looking at two and four and changing the curve the other way? That's certainly something that, that, we, that we do. And I think that as you, as you look at that, you could uh, look at, um, again, taking it and cranking the angle to be more receptive of the fire apparatus, either going more perpendicular so if you go more perpendicular, what that does is that allows you to shrink the disturbance width. But at the same time, in meeting the needs of, of public safety officials, it does become a little bit more challenging. So maybe, you know, and I would have to defer it to, to the, the client on this, but I mean, that sounds like a, a, a pretty decent solution. If you could put it, align the driveways, and again, you know, create a little bit of a, a reverse curve inside the lot to return back to its original line. Just a point of clarification, um, because what we have is different than that, and I know it's printed out, but on this um, chart right here, going from south to north, lot one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. what are the suggested widths on, on that current chart? So as I look at, uh, so lot one, 16 feet, right here. lot two, 22, 22 feet, yeah. right lot three, 17 yeah. feet, and lot or 19 feet. Yeah. That, that matches what you have. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. right, through the chair. Mm -hmm. Thank I'm you. not sure if this will comply with our bylaw, but is there a possibility of doing two I shared driveways? That, I mean, cause I it sounds like they're going to have to be wider than we'd like for the scenic road. Is it, is it possible to do two shared driveways? So common driveways are allowed under the bylaw for two homes um, with a special permit from the planning board. Okay. So I, I don't know if that's better. It's only two way, two places people have to enter and exit Saddle Hill, and then since they have to be wider anyway. To the chair, I was thinking similarly um, of the common driveway option. What strikes me is that we're sh right now you're showing me, um, showing us a plan with 16 foot openings, but I thought I heard you say that we're going to need much, much more. Um, do you have a plan that shows the larger openings? And could we kind of? Is there a plan that, is? that was the plan that we had originally uh, submitted. That's where I think some of the residents' concerns were coming in because 
you were looking at uh, openings that were, you know, so Saddle Hill Road, as you just mentioned, and it's a wide series, I think, are 21. 21 feet. We had show and driveway openings that were double to two and a half times the width of mm -hmm. the street. D does that match, excuse me, does that match the numbers I read before, 40 feet, 50 yes. feet, 31 yeah. feet? Yes. 31 feet? Mm -hmm. You're correct. So your original plan had wider openings and you amended it. But what I'm hearing is that this is most likely not feasible from a turning radius for the uh, fire apparatus. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So, so, so this, does not, this does not seem like a feasible plan for us to approve. That, I'd like to comment on that. Yeah. Well, let's well, uh, the applicant just uh, yeah, so, like. so through the chair, I guess uh, it's, I think, a discretion piece to some extent for for you guys to, to a working discussion piece. Right. So that's, you know, we're showing you a plan of, of you know, the, the, the two varying scenarios. So. The point I was going to make, Mr. Chair, was that, to their point, it's, it's one or the other. Either you're going to have total absolute safety where a hook and ladder can get to the house, or it's going to be you keep your scenic road scenic and the, the fire trucks are going to be on the street. So I, that's the only point I want to make that. I don't think that's a discussion, in my opinion. I think safety is the number one issue here. If we're, if we're trying to debate whether the homeowners are going to be safe or whether we're going to keep the road scenic, the, the, I'm not sure you, Mr. Not Chair, the only reason we have a say in this ANR is because it's a rock wall. If you look at the rest of the town, people make their driveways decisions on their own and they don't have to conform to any of these. That's not but, but, yes, we do have, but we do yeah. have a say. So I mean, we right. should, right. if we do have a say, we should make, in my opinion, the right say. Okay, but you know. I mean, that's okay. true, that, to you, Mr. Chair, that's an opinion. That, that's okay. the point I want to make, that there's people in this town that would rather have the character than the safety. I mean, everybody here is safety and they say, oh, I got to go safety, but people can think their own mind and go the other way as well. That's the point I want to make. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one question I have for the Chief is, uh, what is the minimum requirements for an opening that we, you would be comfortable with um, to allow your vehicles access to the driveways? So the, the way the bylaw is written, I'm not sure if I'm objecting to you. Yeah. Okay. The way the bylaw is written is it, it creates an analysis of the largest piece of equipment and just keep in mind when we start to switch before them, um, we could always, I could have beta like show you the difference, but there's not a, a huge difference even between the aerial that I have and the engine that I have, mainly because the engine carries so much water because we have so much of our town that's outside of a water district. We have large equipment. Um, so I'm trying to think if I'm getting right to your your. I think I can help. Uh, the chief is, is is addressing the technology that they have, and it varies per location. And right now we don't have exact readings. And I think, if, if you don't mind me translating, uh, the, our colleague Franny is asking for um, at least a ballpark of. Be helpful. Uh, right. So so each driveway would have its own calculation. You know, Saddle Hill. The, this. I kind of knew this example would come when I looked the whole town over. I, I know the town mm -hmm. well. And um, there's certain areas on scenic roads, there's high backings here that I knew would challenge the ability of a vehicle to make a swing. So uh, there's other areas where it's, um, we can make the swing into the kennel with our aerial that's down farther. Mm -hmm. And it's just the luck of the angle of the road as you approach and there's two stone pillars there. Um, we had a fire call this year, and it was um, there's about six inches of clearance, and it's on most of our vehicles from the aerial all the way to the front bumper. We have to take each one and watch it going into that. And again, our bylaw wasn't for existing properties, but it's for us as a community to look forward to introduce what I sold as the appropriate level of public safety for the new buildings going forward. And I try to share stories with the problems I've had going to buildings that exist already where people decided to have smaller driveways and tighter openings and I, I can't get into them. And they're, they're, as much as we appreciate scenic roads, the, the expectation at the end of the day when I'm facing an emergency is they expect me to get in there. That's, okay. I, I can tell you every single time that is the expectation. Before you say, can I make a suggestion and see if the board agrees is 
what's in front of us we're uncomfortable with because it doesn't necessarily meet the safety aspect is maybe ask the applicant with the fire chief and with the calculations is considering ang angle of attack for lot of a better term is looking at the driveways and angling them to the point which provides easier access and may reduce the width and come back with a plan that meets the safety requirements uh, of the houses and also we request you take into consideration the comment about considering shared driveways. I'm not saying do it, but I think you have to look at it and discuss it and consider it. Um, Mr. Chair, there was just a question on the table that I wanted to comment about Mr. Fran. Um, the chief has been before this board um, within the past few years, and I think his proposal was to change the bylaws to 20 feet. Is that correct? <coughs> so <clears throat> May 1st, we passed the town bylaw at town meeting, and, and I think that would answer most of what we're talking about. It's a requirement for them to have, there's a whole list. Um, so it's a 12-foot wide driveway, two-foot berms, and then the entrance is the biggest challenge, especially on a narrow road, and that's where this, if needed, when I'm talking a main road, this, the sweep is not a problem. A new development, the sweep isn't a problem. They make the roads wide enough. But here, on these scenic roads especially, this is where the swept path analysis is brought in. That's a national standard. Right. So but just but I think the 20, the question. I, I think the issue is 20 feet in some circumstances may not be enough. Correct. OK. So. No, I don't think that answered my question. My question was, did you propose in the past year or two, a 20-foot driveway, because you came in front of yeah. us and suggested that. So what I did was, in the process of introducing the town bylaw to all the committees, I went and met with conservation, um, Zach, uh, your, you folks, and I talked about the national standard, the CMR that covered this until last year was 20 feet. And I, um, so I said what would sell, what I heard back hard was 20 feet is too wide for a driveway. Okay. So that's why I, I came in. Everything here, I'm trying to give the lightest version that guarantees us access. So I don't even call out what's of driveways. As long as they can just demonstrate that I can get in the driveway, however they do it. I don't even call in coming from a certain direction. So there's times where we might be coming from another direction because we're coming from another call and we don't know. But as long as there's some avenue that I can jockey the truck around and get in versus some of our existing driveways, I can't get in. So that's, that's what I'm trying to alleviate. Okay. Mr. Chairman, once again, he raises, he raises great points. So I think, you know, if we look at this, Chief, we're more than likely coming from the, uh, the 135 to access these lots. So what we'd like to do is, when you look at a 20-foot opening, I think, you know, when, when you look at especially houses <coughs> in, in this price range and with, with this neighborhood, what we don't want to have is a large expanse of pavement. And, and again, being sensitive to your bylaw in this process, what we'd like to do is come up with an alternative that, to your point, Mr. Chairman, comes in at an angle, meets the requirements of, of the chief. We can run the auto turn simulation software. We have your information. I know because I've run it before. Mm -hmm. um, and he raised some points about his, his water truck and his ladder truck. I recall the same thing. When I, when I ran those before over at the Waterfresh Farm site. So as, as that's the, the approach we'd like to take, we will show in our exhibit, we'll show the, the body of the vehicle, we will show the, the front and the rear tire tracks as they make their way in the swing, so that you will see how much room the chief and his department will need to maneuver a vehicle if they were to come down through here and access the lot, which will set the, the limits of the opening for the stone wall. Okay. If that works for the board. Any discussion? I think I'd like to see something yeah. that's realistic. I think to Kelly's point, it's I, I think this board we would agree that you know safety and probably the applicant as well agrees that that's kind of paramount, right? It's different than a homeowner who builds it himself and he says, hey, I'm gonna take that responsibility when the board doesn't have any oversight. Here we do have some oversight, so I think at a minimum it's gotta, you guys gotta be in simpatico with, with any option that comes back. That's all. Yeah. 
So if looking at, go ahead. Go ahead. if looking at uh, the next date that we could. Uh, well, so our next meeting is September 25th, except we have three public hearings already scheduled. So we have a 7.30, an 8.35, and a 9.15. <coughs> um, so unless the board, board wants to start early, um, we're looking at October 16th. How much time do you think you need to come up with the plan and when is the next the next date the 25th yeah how much time does the board and the planner need it in advance of being here five days or thereabouts uh, uh tuesday before. tuesday prior to the meet so next <coughs> tuesday at five o'clock okay um yeah i mean that's all the time that we would need in terms of the presentation i think what what you will find and i think if, if we sit down with the chief um, you know, in advance, uh, show them what we've come up with. I think we can come up with a solution. So the only way I think that would work is if we agree a seven o'clock yeah, start yeah. date, start time. That works for me. I'm fine. And can I make a comment in general? If to, to kind of, I'm relating to earlier comment from both David and um, Brian's wife. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. I'm blanking yeah. here. Kelly. Kelly. Oh, okay. I agree with both of you. I agree with both of you. <laughs> Kelly's <laughs> saying safety is very important, and it is. And, and David's saying uh, look and feel is very important, and it is. And I think the general answer to Fran's question from the chief uh, is generally 20 feet. So. Uh, I, I think what we're expecting back is whatever calculations happen. I'm sorry, Kelly. Yeah, that, that really, yeah. I'm what, sorry, I'm not even hearing what you're saying. <laughs> I, I really am not. Whatever calculations can happen uh, will probably be within that, uh, that range, and it should be just really straightforward. Uh, this is what we're suggesting. And, and I think, Mr. Chairman, I think the time we will need that, that evening is going to be very minimal. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have one no, comment. I, I haven't said anything yet, and I'd, I'd love to. And I'm I'm a little flabbergasted with. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little, um, I'm struggling with your options. I want you to be able to do something that is really attractive there. I'm a huge proponent of scenic roads. Um, I live on one, and I know the challenges. Um, I would, re so I would really love to see something that's a little creative that maximizes the the scenic road not just for you and your homes but for everybody else who lives on that street that has come to appreciate um you know that it's as scenic as it is um and yet satisfies our our safety requirements so you know i'm i'm really hoping that you can because you guys do this for a living and i don't um, come up with something that's really attractive and workable because yeah, I think that's what everybody wants to see happen. Anytime I do one of these, I look at it as if I'm approaching my own house lot. So I think, again, with, in the spirit of, you know, the bylaw and trying to minimize the impacts, that is why I'm not going to go with a random 20 foot width. Yeah. We are going to work that width. And then the chair's suggestion, which was a great suggestion, with the fire chief's uh, comments, absolutely. I have to ask a complicated question from the fire chief, and, and I apologize in advance. Um, is it okay that if it's accessible from one side and not the other? What I'm, again, I'm trying to, um, Compromise and just have a, a solution that gets me in. So, okay. uh, I'm, you know, it's not perfect. Um, okay. The perfect model was the way somebody wrote a CMR for the state that was, I did a lot of research before we did the bylaw and they wrote it really well. But yeah. it is over, it takes a community like ours and shell shocks us, and yeah. I get it. So, yeah. I'm trying to kind of, yeah. you know, there are, there's some stuff probably you got to look at. To help with the walls, if there's some designs or whatever, I don't know what those solutions yeah. are. I, I I hope we find them. I'm just trying to hold to the part that I got to meet the intent to get into somebody's driveway. Yeah, I, cel I celebrate being able to put out a fire or get in there mm. and yeah. to help somebody in need. I, Mr. I Chair, absolutely do. I'll I'll be the bad guy once again on this discussion. You know, Dave Paul doesn't want safety, but I think <laughs> I think we're overstepping our boundary here. The the reason this is before us is to preserve a scenic road. It's not, this is an a &R. We don't have any jurisdiction over the how- The a is separate from what we're discussing. We haven't even started on the a &R I understand, just follow me along for a second. The a &R, we don't have a say in 
how long the driveways are. What we're doing is supposed to be protecting a scenic road. That's the whole of this bylaw. It's not for safety. It's for protecting a scenic road. So they're come before us and said, we have 16 foot cutout. Can you approve it? And we're saying, no, you want, we want you to take away more of a stone wall. Think about that. No, we're supposed I, to be, that's what? I believe our role is to approve what is appropriate enough to preserve the scenic room <coughs> while still offering safety to our citizens. I mean, I, I'm that's, that's just an opinion that you're reading into it. And it it's a logical opinion. I'm not the. It, it could very well that. be an opinion, but my point is, is you're saying we don't have any jurisdiction. We absolutely do. They're coming here asking for approval on how much footage they can remove from the wall. So we need to decide how much footage they can remove from the wall that will be a safe option for the people that are going to live in that home. That that maybe that's my opinion, but that is my opinion. And if I may, through the chair, it sounds like their side are saying, well, they need more time to work with, with the chief, and it sounds like we're going to have a great solution. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. I do want yeah. to ask, yeah. that one of the criteria is the necessity of proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, and, and convenience. Yeah. So, Thank you. I mean, I think we're that's, supposed to be looking at public that's safety. That's in the bylaw? Yes. 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 Right. Okay. B. So we can we make a... Uh, it is a public hearing. I don't know if you want oh. to... Comments from the... Public. Educate myself. I just want to say I appreciate everybody's patience here. This is um, to challenge something like the value of a scenic road. I understand coming from my angle, it's 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 tough on the town. Um, I have a responsibility to have us look at some of the things like when we have storms and power lines and and we've we've looked a lot on trying to save these scenic roads and the trees and I'm just trying to strike a balance here so I appreciate your patience and especially the understanding of a group like yours that really gets into the protection of the scenic roads. so thank you. Thank you Chief. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. To continue the public to hearing to yeah. September 20th. Mr. Chairman, a point of order. Um, before you continue the hearing uh, since the issue of the removal and the fines has been adjudicated at this point, we would ask that you uh, make a motion to vote to remove the uh, cease and desist oh. yes. order so we can yes. work. Yes. I, I assumed that that was done at the same time, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, let's make the motion on the hearing and then let's go back and revisit the. So I'll move to continue the public hearing to 7 o'clock on September 25th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And I'll move to uh, lift the seat stop work order. Second. All in favor? Oh, oh, discussion. 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 Uh, I was advised by a former planning board member, I should say his name. <laughs> no, I, I, we're, we're, but I think the advice is very good that we should uh, <coughs> receive the check first if that's possible tonight uh, before we uh, rescind any order. And that can happen during the week. It can happen anytime. So if we make a motion uh, along those lines, it's, it's more uh, wise, I believe. Um, I, I, just to, I, I don't accept that motion. Okay. That as a friendly so amendment to the motion. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What, what are we? What are we we lifted the stop again? work order. We lifted the stop order. order. Please do it again. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Abstain? Abstain. Abstain. So carry. It was just, no, my vote was just based on the advice that I didn't really. Who was giving you all relay. this advice, Frank? <laughs> Our former chair has some very good advice on this. I and um, I, I recommend you learn what it is you want to do and do it for yourself on this board. Friendly advice from a. Well, I learned the friendly advice was okay. accurate. Let's advice. see you in two weeks. Uh, oh, so you went two weeks. Oh, well, well so our, plan. Our, our plan is next. So, Jennifer, why don't you talk about an a and plan? So they um, have, as I said previously, frontage on Saddle Hill Road, which is um, a public way. Um, they um, have proposed at this time five lots off of Saddle Hill Road. Um, and uh, the A&R plan meets the criteria for your signature. 
It's uh, approval not required under the subdivision control law. Um, it's really kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> The access to the fifth lot because you've come in front of the right. removal of the stone walls with four entrances and there's five lots. So, what's the plan on access to the fifth lot? I guess that's a driveway plan for access to the remaining. Yeah, the remaining. We'll use the, the same opening that we currently have open. Which is the one you do, that's <coughs> the one that um, they have previously Jennifer approved allowed. access. Previously. Yeah, that's right. They didn't okay. have a wall. The we'll the full wall. Okay. Yes. Permission wall. There we go. <laughs> they had a wall. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do that yeah, again. Okay. No. I, I guess I'll just say this is just for the. The plans themselves, the, the driveway plan is still something that right, right. that, that separate lot. So it's just. Okay. Could I just ask yeah. though, do these lots extend all the way to the end of the property you own? Like there's not going to be um, designated open <laughs> space fine. in the back, but there the and there will be no way to then build additional homes behind these homes. No. It'll, okay. Not unless you want to build them on stilts. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Any dis further discussion? I'm nervous to ask any questions yeah. after it's being a no-brainer. No. No. Um, Is there a motion? I have, I have just one comment. Um, so when you come back with the other plan, can you show us the access for the fifth lot? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're, we're looking at this thing with the. Yeah. yeah. It seems it seems um, unrealistic that this is you know that we, we need to vote on something that's not what's really going to be built. And. I would just like to say, recognizing it's not necessarily our purview, um, all those trees going down was a, a piece of the shock value for um, the community. And anything you can do to preserve whatever trees are left and or in your landscaping to recreate some of what was there would be, I'm sure, appreciated by the homeowners as well as the existing residents on the road. I mean, I think that's a great point. We've actually hired a landscape architect to work with us on clearing the rest of the lots so we can buffers between the lots. Perfect. So appreciate Thank that. You. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the ANR lots. We have a second. Second. All in. Any further discussion? And it's not a public hearing, but I'll. If there's anyone, Is this I will horrible? make. Yes, you vote to accept the yes. done that in the past. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been on this for? <laughs> Do you want to come up, identify yourself, and your address? <coughs> yeah, my name is Fran Regan. I'm right across from the clearing that they're doing now. Um, I would love it if there's no ambiguity with these plans because what we thought was going to happen is not, not what's happening here. So. Um, I, uh, what did you think was going to happen, sir? Um, when you look at the plans, there's driveways, and they go back a certain amount of footage, and then there's a uh, buffer zone. And then it looks like Legacy Farms. <laughs> so, anyways. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Abstain. So carry. Two seconds, two seconds. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> he said that with a straight face. <clears throat> Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Just on the first one, Fran. Just this first one? Yeah. yeah. So the next item on the agenda is the request for minor changes to Western Nursery's site plan approval. If you want to come up. <coughs> Sorry. Jennifer, do you want to give a little background? Um, just need two? Uh, yeah, just two signatures of the date, and then he can take the top one that you signed. 
So he can take that one. I think we have to sign the other ones too. Um, that the other one's one. That one. That's it. Sorry. It's just telling you. Brian Carp. My colleague to the left. Was this all? Uh, That's all you need. It could have been worse. No, I don't know. For me. Thank you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thanks for your patience. What's your wife's name? <laughs> Which one? Which wife? Wow, the room cleared out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, so I was approached by Western Nurseries that they wanted to make some changes to a site plan that had been approved back in 2014. Um, I believe there were two buildings approved on that site plan at the time. One has already been, I believe, constructed, um, and the other one has not been constructed yet, the commercial sales building. Um, they wanted to make some changes to it. Uh, I looked at the changes. I felt that they seemed to be minor from a planning perspective, but as you know, any changes to the site plan have to come back to this board for approval. Okay. Um, if, it's, if you deem it's minor, you can approve it this evening. If you deem it's major, then they have to go back for a new hearing. Okay, so we would need two votes, one vote on whether it's minor, and then the second is a, if we deem it is minor, would be a second <laughs> vote to approve or not. That's correct. Okay. Turn over the applicant. Thank you. You all got the hand out here on the, the five points. Mm -hmm. The uh, moving the um, 12 by 24 loading dock forward um, is in keeping, if, if you look at the diagram, with how we want to restructure the corner of the building, which is the number three. We want to move it so that it faces a little bit further east. And that's where I want to re relocate the loading dock. We also want to eliminate the retaining wall extension on the south side as it really serves no purpose. It'll meet the grade pretty well the, the way it is. That would be number two. And then we'd like to lower the uh, final finished grade of the building by about a foot. And we don't have locating. numbers, Wayne. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? We don't have numbers. The one, two, three. The building oh, yeah, it be oh, it's, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this looking for numbers. I'm okay. sorry. But it doesn't, okay. it doesn't, it's not it's not okay. correspond. Yeah, so I'm not really sure on this um, diagram exactly right. what you're referring That's to. That's number one. The okay. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. So no. This is one, I guess. Okay. That's the loading so up. why don't you, yeah. it might yeah. be helpful using the plan you have and sort of meshing it with the opposite side of your page is one is move the 20, 12 by 24 loading dock forward to be even with the southeast face of the building. Yes. Why okay. don't you flip the plan and show us on the plan where that is. That's, let, me, let me come up with a little bit easier. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, the flipping the building is, is this corner. We want to move that three feet yeah. over just to, to turn it a little bit so it has a little bit better face. And then with that, we'd like to be able to move this loading dock further down so it's on the <coughs> corner of the building. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we want to eliminate this um, wall extension where the X's are down here. Mm. Okay. And then we want to lower the, the building uh, final grade because we've got the, the out, it, because it makes sense with the way that we've got it graded at, at this point. And the final. Oh, lower it so the do, for the dog. I'm not sure. Yes. So that they can get here. into it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I may, if yes. lowering the, or moving the dock south is for when the trucks are backing up, we don't want them to be taken out. Straight. The entire corner of the building it was originally recessed back about oh, 12 feet. Okay. When Thanks. you move that forward, we don't want to build a loading dock on top of a sewer line. Um, and then <coughs> working with the architects and whatnot, um, it, based on where the bathrooms are going to be located, it makes more sense to exit the building further north. This is so we kill two birds with one stone. Yep. I'm sorry, can we just have your name for the record? Please? I'm sorry, Brian Quinn. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Brian. Just so. for my uh, clarification, so this goes down towards 
Franklin Road is here. I'm just trying to orientate Frank, myself. Franklin Road is going to be on the top part of the paper. It's north. Okay. And then 135 is down here. 135 is way, way down south. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so, point of clarification, the original name of section of Franklin Road is now Legacy Farms Road North is the southern southwest portion of this picture. That's actually not a good way of saying it. But no. the southern bottom it, of this it, picture. You don't see that road here. But on one of the other documents that was... Yeah, there's another have, map that shows... Oh, the original approved the, plan. The original oh. approved plan. Okay. Yeah. But maybe that's not really Franklin anymore. That's <laughs> no, I think it is. It looks like this is Legacy okay. Farms North right here. Yes, that is Legacy Farms so North. So it still is Franklin. This is Franklin. And then way down here would be... 135. 135 yeah. is down and here. 135. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So let's open up the discussion. Discussion point, Fran. Mr. Chairman. Is this building visible from either Franklin Road or 135? It would not be visible from 135. All right. And it it's recessed back um, about 300 feet from Franklin Road. About the length of a football field. Approximately. Is that yes. the only place that this building is visual? Visual from a if I was driving by or if I was okay. um, <coughs> coming up the legacy north yep. from one thirty five. Yep. You would probably be able to see it on your right on hand. On the right side. hand side. Back in I know where it is. All right. And this is not going to change the flow of any type of traffic, you're just moving the dock there a little bit. Just the, you know, yeah. some small changes there. It's working with all the engineers to try and get to the point where we can um, work on uh, executing on the plan. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder that putting the building here in the original design has been approved. Mm -hmm. So we're just talking about the modification. The, the modification. Mm -hmm. right. So I think I would agree that changes are minor. I'd be, I'd be happy to make that motion. I'll second that. Discussion? Seems All straightforward. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Um, any other discussion on the changes? You can make the motion, then discuss the change. <laughs> but since we're rolling on the. My only question is if the retaining wall was proposed originally. What was the purpose originally for that lower retaining wall, and why suddenly does it disappear now when it doesn't look like you're making any changes the to that area of the property? Originally, excuse me. Originally, it was thought to try and, uh, for lack of a better term, corral your customer base toward the the building, but then we realized if we did that, we also impe impeded the flow of traffic for our customer base. So um, it's better to be without for that flow. So basically, for the vehicles coming in, you're looking at <laughs> continuing our driveway act <laughs> discussion. <laughs> is looking that the retaining wall might, in fact, impede the ability of somebody to turn. Correct. Okay. I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, point number five: You talked about moving the sewer line. Yes. Exiting the building to approximately the midpoint of the building. So, yeah. So basically, you're just kind of I don't know where the current plan has it, right? To move it in from the side over to the. Is that going to? Originally, it was coming out of the southeast corner. Yep. And just running 90 degrees straight out to the D box. And. We're just looking it because the better. dock is moving south mm -hmm. to be flush with. Got to move it up. Makes sense. Makes sense. Point of order, Mr. Chair. I just I for, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention it earlier when we before we started, but I, I need to leave early tonight, so I'm just going to okay. scoot out. Thank you. Second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so quick on that. Friendly amendment. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Anybody want to make an amendment, a uh, motion to uh, approve the plan as submitted? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen.
So just for the record, we can do things. Can I just make a comment before yes. we move on to the next topic? Um, I just have to leave as well. I just wanted to express my uh, deep uh, disappointment in the planning board tonight on the fine de decision. You have a multi-millionaire developer who has worked in the town before who intentionally moved the wall, put it back because they knew they did wrong, moved it, put it back several times to let their truck in and out. They're going to make, or they're going to sell 11 properties for over 13 million dollars, and you're worried about a fine that's one thousandth of that amount. Um, so I think it sets a bad standard for the residents in town that just ask for forgiveness rather than permission. And so going forward, I hope that people that do things to their stone walls and cut down trees on Saddle Hill are offered the same forgiveness that you gave these multi-millionaire developers. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Zoning Advisory Committee appointment. <laughs> yeah, the town. So, um, <clears throat> this afternoon, uh, Mr. Verso asked me to put together a list with um, everyone who has requested appointment and their addresses. So that was on the table in front of you this, afternoon, this evening. Um, and at the bottom of that list, there was four names that were received after the deadline for the board's consideration. And through the chair, I want to thank Jennifer and Annalyn for uh, putting this together and sending me some explanations about some of the processes behind the other committees and how they uh, promote people. And I'd like to make a motion that we uh, move this entire slate as members of the ZAC. Uh, second that. Um, so I, I, um, I, the only, I, I usually am all about inclusion. It's a huge committee. So I just offer as a consideration um, that it's very cumbersome to work with what's going to be 20 people. Um, and that being said, I usually really, you know, want more participation rather than less. It's just, um, it's, it's a lot. Um, and the other, uh, the other question I wanted to at least discuss was whether or not everybody should live in Hopkinton. And I feel a little bit strongly about that given it's our zoning bylaws. Um, and I would have a preference for everybody on the committee being a resident of town. So I just, because that question has already come up and um, typically the board has um, agreed that the representative from the Chamber of Commerce if is not a resident be okay because technically they represent the business interests not the resident interest and so typically that person has not always been a resident of Hopkinton so it, there is precedent for it I, I understand I am speed I appreciate that um, just speaking to my preference I know that there are many members of the Chamber of Commerce that also live in town so it wouldn't be I mean I certainly want a Chamber of Commerce rep um, it would be my preference that everybody on Zach um, lived in Hopkinton and I just want to point out that we have to pick someone from the board. From the board, so. In the past, it's been the vice chair that has usually. <laughs> oh, is there yeah, precedent no. for that, yeah. too? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. No pressure, no pressure. It's, it's uh, wonderful. Uh -huh. um, I have a couple of questions. The ZAC applicants, uh, those received after the deadline, are you proposing that they should be added to the slate as well, yes. Frank? Um, okay, so one thing, and I did speak of, uh, I didn't speak with the current chairman, and he has talked, uh, he talked, I think two years ago, they had a, lar a group this large, um, and I don't know if we make the determination. He said, having a board this large, and I, I, all for inclusion, I'm also for getting things done. And having a group that large does not necessarily help facilitate um, getting things done. I'll just I throw it out there. Uh, but they gave me at a straight note, sir. Through, through the chair, um, I share the same concern that a large committee is hard to get anything done, but we didn't ask all these people to come here tonight, so I, I wouldn't There be are two people here. <laughs> right. I was actually going to ask from a public perspective, is this indicative of the way you do business in town? I respond to an ad in the newspaper. You ask nothing about who I am, what my qualifications are, and suddenly I'm on the Zoning Advising Committee. I'd love to be. You don't know who I am, and you don't know anything about me. I promise I'm intelligent and passionate. I think it speaks really poorly that you're up here. You know what, sir? You have to be at the microphone if you want everybody to hear you. 
Right. And continuing my press down. And you definitely 21 Curtis that. Road. Name I think it speaks truly poorly that we're having a discussion about having this many people here and they're not here. Where is your interest and your passion? I got a new puppy this weekend. My wife's at home. She worked late. I didn't have dinner with her. I sat here for two and a half hours, watched you bicker. I saw some sexist remarks that I didn't particularly appreciate. We gave a fine out. It was fantastic. And now at the end, we're going to windmill the people who might take your job? Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? That's not what the role is, sir. Yeah. Not to argue with you. And I don't want to argue. It just it seems strange to me. This feels like something you should have a passion for, that you should represent yourself for. I'm surprised that that's really all there is to this. So the way that this has been done in the past, if I can speak to that, is that it has been very inclusionary. So that if people want to participate on the Zoning Advisory Committee, we've sort of taken all comers. So that has been the situation um, in the past. We welcome all comers. Um, expecting that anybody who puts their name in for something like this is invested, is passionate, is interested, and perhaps and hopefully brings a variety of perspectives, opinions, and um, motives or, or um, desires for the, for the zoning going forward. I'd, so I'd like can, to make two okay. comments, if that's OK. Um, my first comment is um, I'm not necessarily in favor of approving the board to include the applicants that applied after the fact. I have some hesitation about that. Um, to the point that if they truly wanted to be on the board, I think they would have met the deadline. Um, that's my opinion. And secondly, um, for the couple members that have concerns about the size of the board, I don't know these applicants, so I guess my question to those of you that have concerns, how would we go about deciding <laughs> who would not be on the board? Um, mm. So I have some concerns about how we would make that decision. So I did have some thoughts that if we were going to have to eliminate people from the list, that we need to have them, invite them to come back and let them know that there's a chance they could be eliminated. Some people might withdraw voluntarily, and we would have to develop criteria. Like, do we need to have three people from each precinct? Do we need right. to have a gender balance? Do we need? Yeah, I mean, I definitely right. would not be in favor of just randomly picking no. names from this list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. John here I second that. Kimball Road. I'm one of the four people that was added late. But uh, the reason I was added late is because I've tried to get on other committees and they I've said, first tried to go on the cable TV committee. They said, well, no, but we'll have another opening for you. Why don't you come to the appropriations committee? We've got some openings. Well, no, that was last Thursday. I got bumped from that. And they said, well, okay, there's, you know, the, the Zach committee. So that's why I'm Late well, thank you for thank coming you. to at least yeah. uh, explain. <laughs> yes. and it, it's hard to know why people miss the deadline. I just, you know, when you're looking at a size of 20 people and we're, we're trying to figure out. Could I just add about the deadline was on Labor Day Monday, which is a holiday anyway. Uh, so well, was, that, was it on Tuesday? So that was the fourth. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for your persistence and looking for a way to make your contribution to the town. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I have no, um, I have no fancy ideas for how to, um, you know, how to select from the list, um, and I know that it's very possible that people have an expectation that they'll get appointed because it's been that way always. I just, um, you know, I, I, I know that it is very hard to work with a, a big committee. Not impossible, not impossible, but it's challenging. The chair. I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be, but it seems as though uh, the, the, the public's comment is, is valid that, you know, shouldn't we at least talk to these people before we appoint them? Um, I don't know if that, it, you know, we've had this suggestion to randomly pick from this list or just accept everybody without knowing anyone. I, I, not to yeah, I don't think that pick. was an actually a suggestion. That was, those were my words, but right. I was just asking how what the suggestion was, but I don't think right. anybody but, but, but suggested I think, that. I think as a minimum criteria, at least uh, hear why everyone's interested in being on the committee. If, can I explain my nomination? Yes. <laughs> and my thought process on nominating uh, the slate. Uh, I know about half the people on this personally. I've served on committees uh, for years with, with many of them. I'm just addressing this to you. Uh, through the chair. Uh, I do appreciate that you guys have come here tonight. Um, it shows that you care, and that's the most important thing. I might disagree with you a lot, 
uh, which I do with a lot of the statements you made tonight. Uh, but I, I appreciate your right to say them and your passion saying them. And so thank you for coming. And I know where you live uh, has been involved. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean it that way. I know where you live has been involved a lot of neighborhood issues concerning construction and zoning issues. And I know that. Sir, with respect, that's twice tonight. I'm going to strongly ask that you just stop. Twice the first comment went. was inappropriate. And that one, while I know it was tongue in cheek. I agree. Thank you. Telling you your point, for, part. Sir, okay. sir, your point's been made, and it is a little offensive. Uh, well, I don't have to disagree with you, because I'm not really aware of any of uh, what you're saying, because you're implying a meaning that okay. it's not there. Uh, my intention for a motion in the slate uh, is that I know the people, uh, at least eight of the people on this, served with them on, for many years in committees. And I know that they would be able to guide the newcomers to the committee that are interested and want to help the town. and. Uh, I know particularly some newcomers uh, to this committee that haven't been on before personally uh, have a lot of great ideas and have run for public office. And I think that uh, a wide range of people on a larger committee can help bring a wider range of ideas. And it's typically what we've done with Zach in the past. Uh, so if uh, it does get unwieldy, it's something we can uh, keep an eye on as it's a board, it's a subcommittee of the planning board. <coughs> Uh, but right now I'm confident that the people that I know uh, would, would be willing and able to work with people that are, are new to committees that I don't know. Um, that said, I'm going to withdraw my uh, nomination of the slate based on some of the interaction from tonight. Is there a feeling from the board that we want to uh, meet the applicants and maybe do it at a I know it's going to cram their schedule down because it's going to be four weeks before we can we can do it. Okay. I'd like I, to meet them. Yeah, I, I think if we could do it through the through the, through the chair, we're going to do, through, through. Um, I do. I would like to be able to meet the the applicants even for three minutes each. Okay. Um, find out just a little bit of who they are, why they want to be on the zoning advisory committee. Full stop. Okay. Um, and I think that would allow us, even, sir, hearing your background, you can, I can appreciate now. I think if we can, Mr. Chairman, be able to kind of have that type of quorum at the next, probably not the next meeting, but the one after, then I think we can kind of feel better about whatever slate that we then put forward to vote on as a... I, I, have, some, I have a couple concerns, if I may. Um, one, we didn't say that there was a maximum number of people that could join the board. That's number one. So now we're going to ask the people to come in on their time. We're going to interview them for three minutes. And then are we going to deliberate on who we like better? I mean, at the end of the day, if these people come in, are we going to say, we don't want you on the board? So what is the purpose of bringing them in unless we're actually going to decide that someone isn't fit to be on the board? And then if they're not fit to be on the board, what criteria <coughs> are we using? Good so, point. So I have some real concerns with that. So I just want to say, I'm sorry, I'm, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all, Kelly, um, but it's not really, when we, when we make choices on boards that have certain sizes, it's not, it's not certainly deciding that someone is unfit. It's picking the people that we think for whatever reason we think um, are the best fit. But, but um, I agree, everybody who raises their hand and is willing to work for the town, um, I celebrate that. We want to invite more participation and not discourage participation. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I just don't think we're set up with uh, an interview process for this. I don't think we have the right tools in place. I don't know what criteria we're going to use. I don't know. If I'm going to know someone more after a three-minute interview than I know by looking at their mm -hmm. name on the page, and maybe I would get a better feel for them, but I just don't know that I'm fit to. I, I to think do that. one of the issues we have is we have no number for the board, so it's well, hard to exactly. Right. Had we had we said we have ten openings, we it would have been very easy. The first ten people would be on the board, but we didn't. It's an it's an open board. I mean, I would suggest that the four people that applied after the deadline, perhaps if we feel this board is too large, we don't, you know, put them on the board or we don't approve them for the board. Um, but aside from that, I, I think we have really no right to limit it after the fact. 
Amy? I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I feel like we either need to approve them all or come up with some kind of process to, like, to set a cap. Like, we can only have 12, and then we'll come back and pick 12 next time. We could ask them to not do interviews, but to submit, you know, their their uh, education and well, we can job wish experience. Fran well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, you know, Frank and I both served on this board for a number of years. Oh, oh good. Didn't you not? I was on Kong Kong. Okay, so I, I've but been you've on this been board on those for a number of years. Okay. Um, we never had this many people, right? So this is a good thing. I think it is a good to, thing. I think to Kelly's point, we're not equipped. It's to us to do all this stuff it would put us into November, December. Exactly. This is an advisory committee. That means right. I think the, once a month or once every three right. weeks, give or take. People will self-select. If they get too frustrated with it, you're not. You don't have to go to every single meeting. Some people don't show up. I think whoever the chairman is, if it's going to be the same chairman as last year, will have to then manage a larger group and figure out what agenda items he wants to try to move forward and try to get it through that large of a group. Otherwise, we're going to be here for months trying to figure out a group and which, what, to John's first question is we got to figure out how large, 8, 10, 12, 16, whatever number, and then go through the interview process and if somebody doesn't get elected, do they get upset? Do they? Let them all. I think at this point you just got to let the whole herd in. It, it, it is possible that people may self-select when they find out there are 18 yeah. people on the committee. That some people might say, "Well, never mind. I've done it before. I don't need to do it this year." Mm -hmm. um, but we have two applicants here. So what I'd like to do is give the opportunity to two applicants here to spend a couple of minutes and talk about, you know, what you see on the board and and why you want to be on the board. So we have volunteer to start first. And can we ask them what they think we should do tonight? Yeah, yeah, that would be. Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, John Hamilton, Four Kimball Road. I've been living in Hockington six years, and um, I just wanted to get involved in town committee type, you know, volunteer work. Uh, my background is uh, I've, I'm practicing attorney for 17 years. Um, Twelve years before that, I worked for the Food and Drug Administration as an engineer and a compliance uh, officer and enforcing FDA's laws and regulations and promulgating a few rules. Um, and uh, I just want to you know, help out. Oh. Thank, you. Thank you. What do you think of the participating on a larger board, smaller board, board based on the discussion that we've had? <laughs> My only experience in that sort of large group is with an investment club I helped start. You know, and people just don't show up. Some people just don't do the work and other people do. So like the self-selection is sort of, you know, both in participa participation coming to a meeting but also in doing the work. So, um, yeah, I guess my, my view is like having more people, uh, it, it would be a good thing, but you'll probably get a core group that are actually doing the work anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So hello, I'm Matt. Uh, please don't mistake my enthusiasm or challenge for, let's say, difficulty in working. I like accountability. I love accountability. And I try to bring that passion and enthusiasm to pretty much everything that I do. So I'm going to ask questions because it's who I am, but it doesn't mean that I need a yes or a no. Sometimes I just like to poke to understand what's going on. So who am I? My wife and I just moved to town six weeks ago. We couldn't be more excited. This is an actual dream come true for us. Do you know you guys are the sort of town where somebody actually just delivers you a free newspaper about things going on in the town? There's a lady who shows up at your house with a binder and talks to you about all the great things that happen here. That's the town that I bought a house in. That's why I'm here today, because I have a passion about being part of that community. In my personal life, I manage about 20 people in the biotech industry. I problem solve. I do data, I do documentation, and I do details. My idea of a fun night involves Scotch and Microsoft Excel. I <laughs> like minutia. This feels like the sort of committee that might appreciate someone with a little bit of passion for minutia. Thank you. We don't ask one now. Okay. <laughs> So we have a withdrawn motion. So right now there is nothing in front of the board. Can I, can I also ask a question about, uh, Fran, are you in, by the way? Am are I? you in to do it again from the planning board? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we have to vote on that, by the way. It, uh, yes, I, I'm sure. But I wouldn't want to vote somebody Just in, in case. who wasn't interested. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I, you made a comment that, you know, the person who's been the, the chairman before, and I think I want to be careful about assuming who's going to chair the committee as well. 
right? That's why I it's I an not open mention, discussion. That's why I did not mention the individual's name because okay. it is open. Right. I'm, I'm only saying that the previous chair. Um, so that was done consciously. Okay. With the thought of this new group will appoint whoever they feel is the right representative to be the chairman. I think the planning board vice chair has been chair of the ZAC in the past. No. Before. John Betts is open. Oh, yes. Oh, in yes. the history in, of like oh, the history. history. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We Absolutely. Won't, we, we won't do a little bit of revisionist history. <laughs> 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 well, you know, one of the things I would recommend is that, and, and nothing against the historic chair, but it's always good. I'm a believer in shaking things up, as you know. So getting new leadership, et cetera. Not that there's anything wrong with the old leadership, but it's always good to shake things up a little bit. Don't disagree. Um, and I just, as I was thinking about it, just making um, room for leadership with different faces too, not necessarily a planning board member, not necessarily right. the chairman yeah. of the board of selectmen, for example, yeah. hypothetically. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, but I'm just, I, and I, I'm sorry, but I mean that sincerely. Yeah. Um, this is an opportunity for a lot of people to participate and contribute, and there is value in having. Um, other people serving as in leadership roles in various committees, particularly something like this, where the the, um, the recommendations do come primarily before our board and the, the selectmen. If I can piggyback on what you're saying, one of the things that <clears throat> I see is if you have somebody who has a leadership role on another board and then has a, a is chair of this, it, it's almost like um, I don't want to say undue influence, but it's double influence, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah. That I if you that decided to be chair, yeah. you know, you're coming from the planning board onto that and chair on that, and it's kind of yeah. a lot of influence. So it's it's nice to shake things up and have somebody who's got the uh, desire to contribute and to bring in new and fresh ideas. Um, it might shake things up to. Yeah. And to I assume a leadership role. I also want to say we did kind of get a little, um, a little bogged down and, and maybe lost our enthusiasm for the fact that so many people um, threw their names in the hat. That is that is the really good news is that a lot of people threw their names into the hat. Um, you know, it's my personal privilege to know several of them too, and there's a lot of intellect, investment, talent, and uh, ability. Um, on this, you know, this slate, and uh, we're fortunate to have everybody that stepped forward. So, does somebody want to make a? I'll renew or redo my motion to move the slate. Uh, I uh, like the speeches were made tonight, and that's. Uh, um, so that includes the four. Yes. Okay. And includes Fran. As so and Fran, yes. Well, thank you. do we have to vote him separately or? Do we have Should to we vote them separately, them or can we roll it into one? Throw them on the bottom. Well, throw them <laughs> on the bottom. Throw them on the bottom. bottom. <laughs> can I get a second? Second. All in, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Fran, thank you, okay. by the way. I know it's an thank additional you. commitment. And Good thanks fun. to the two of you. I know you're going to be uh, eager contributors. And it's good to see, especially somebody new in town, it's good to have I can't get uh, over that. that. Welcome aboard. Brand new to town. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't necessarily jump into politics. <laughs> <and> I, but, <laughs> but, you know, but, but I agree. It's why I came here. So I, I, have a, I have not your stories, but I have similar stories to 25 years ago when I drove into town with my little kids and uh, stopped at. For me, it was Colella's and Hockenden Drug, family-owned businesses. So there's everybody's got a little story of what makes the difference. Yeah. I showed her the high school. I cheated. What's that? <laughs> I showed her the high school, and I told our kids would go there. I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And we look forward to you both as being active, uh, active members. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is to approve the, approve the minutes of August 14th. I'll move the minutes as written. I have uh, huh? one. I'm sorry. No. Don't have to wait for it to be second or first. Yeah, well, because it should be a second. Second. I'll second. Okay. I just discussion. have one comment. Um, the discussion about the parking lot um, access. Uh, I did. Where are the minutes? Hold on. I just want to find it really quickly. Anyway. 
Yeah. Um, I did make a comment. It was a caveat, basically. Oh, where is that? Um, I can't find it on yours. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I don't know how much more I can do. <laughs> two seconds. Oh, yeah. I apologize. Yeah, I time. closed out too early. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, we should. No. Um, the zero Ash Street. Yes, the zero Ash Street. So, page five. Page five. Uh, when we voted, I did vote uh, no to allowing the parking lot, but I did make a comment that I believe you actually uh, agreed with even though you abstained from the vote. Right. Uh, the comment was along the lines of uh, I would vote no, but I did uh, strongly urge or hope that the town would come back with us to us with a um, with uh, reasonable alternatives because I do feel that it's very important that we offer yes. access and with parking to those trails and that property because it is a town mm -hmm. asset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, d I just want to make sure that that's in the record. That's page eight, eight of the minutes. Yeah, page eight. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry, page, page eight. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Because it, ju it just shows that I voted uh, no, but I, I just, I'm yes. not. It I actually says that you voted yes. Well, because the motion me. wants to. Yes. Yeah, I voted yes to deny, but I okay. strongly urge the town to continue to pursue reasonable alternatives so that we can revisit this in the future. And I did say that, and yes. I believe, John, yes. you did yes. uh, agree with that statement. Yes. So Do you want to email me? I will. <laughs> I, just, I would like that to be in the record. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a motion as uh, amended. Okay. okay. I second term in it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. And I would say, I think one of the things is that uh, if CONCOM and the town would like somebody from the planning board to work with them on it. Uh, we could get a volunteer. I'd be happy to volunteer yeah, if somebody awesome. else wants to. Anybody. I have some comments about the um, uh, center school reunion. I was just going to. About along those lines. OK. Uh, talking about uh, mm. uh, information from other committees that we sit on. Right. So I'm on the center, schools, uh, center school reuse committee. and. Um, we met just once and we organized. Uh, uh, Chief um, Sam, I'm on the spot. The former police uh, fire police chief uh, Rick Kennedy or Flannery. Flannery. Flannery is our is our chairman of the board, uh, and Ken, our <coughs> former chair, is the vice chair. And, and who's the vice chair? Ken Ken Weisman. Okay. And uh, the full board met at the Park and Rec office, and um, we have a lot of great ideas. Uh, Ken had, as the chairman of the planning board, we put together a list of recommendations and ideas that we wanted the board of selectmen to consider. Um, and we brought a lot of those ideas back at the first meeting and with some changes and things as, as we've learned over time. And uh, Elaine served as our uh, secretary, uh, at least for that first meeting. And um, we just basically spitballed a lot of the ideas and uh, kind of get a feel from what all our, our, our perspectives are. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting committee. Uh, we're going to meet again uh, fairly soon uh, this month. And we're also going to reach out and do public, um, um, I should have wrote this down before I said it. Forums. Uh, public forums to get people's opinions and ideas. Um, so. Former Chief of Southborough Police, Jane Moran, came as a citizen and she wanted to talk about the trails. And so we had a discussion about uh, the Elmwood Park property and how that ties into the back of the center school. So uh, I think we have a general consensus on the committee that it will make a great idea to continue looking at having parking in a trailhead behind center school where there's plenty of space for parking and a trailhead uh jane said we'll have to work to make the trails all connect and the other side of that discussion is that the trailhead that we were discussing at the south end of ash street with the uh tree in the wall would still make a great boy scout or a scout project um 
going forward where there's still be a trailhead there and maybe still use the parking with um, with the uh, butcher shop uh, that said um, the last time I was discussing this at the planning board um, I mentioned some items that were maybe not clear enough to people and I don't want to mislead anyone and I spoke to the former chair of the planning board and he wanted me to correct some items and I'd like to do that right now uh, first of all, the impression that there would be a parking lot at the gate is uh, not the drive-in kind into the property. It would be the kind at the gate, just as it is at Which the... Which location yeah, are you talking about? Talking about? Uh, between yeah, Ken's house and the house next yeah, to it. And um, the upper location has four spots that were uh, put together by DPW, and our scout, Dan, at the time, cleared the area and put the trail marker sign up. So that's a similar kind of idea as I was thinking about the gate property. When I said the gate is the best entrance, it is the best entrance, I feel, but not for a big parking project. Um, there was concern that the neighbors bought that property to block access. Uh, now that was the impression people got, and some people have. The other side of it is, there is a series of concerns about privacy there. And there is a very real concern because an Eversource trims back the trees and the growth uh, that's there on, because they have an access easement, which basically lets them do anything they want. And that's pretty unfair to the landowners. So there's more to the story than I was aware of at the time. And I think that if the town does work with the landowners uh, and Eversource to increase the privacy that should be there for, the, for them, and at the same time, gaining access, access for the townspeople. Um, I think that there's a solution out there that includes the north, south, and no, I'm sorry, north, south, and central access points to this property. And um, it's not a simple put an entrance here, put an entrance there. It's it's a multiple multiple access property with multiple okay. access points. I appreciate that, but let's. Stick to, yeah, that's stick to the that's not on the agenda. Yeah. That's, that's, that's part of what we talked about at Center School uh, Reuse Committee and um, updated information that I've received. Since. Can, can okay. I ask a I question relevant. specifically about Center School? Is sure. there a way for um, members of the public to access the list of potential ideas as it exists right now? Is that posted somewhere? or? Uh, it would be the meeting minutes. Uh, I don't actually honestly know if they're posted yet, but I'm sure they might be. And uh, it's quite a long list, and there's multiple uses and multiple phases, and um, because it's a large space, a large building, and um, I don't think there's any clashing interest, which is the best part of it so far. Um, one of the if, if, I'm sorry, if I could just follow up. Um, it would be really helpful, I think. So one of the things that I think I, I noticed, for, for example, the Gold Standard Committee that really um, managed to get their message out, I think, is the Elementary School Building Committee that's currently building the Marathon School. Um, and I think the lessons learned from that is the more opportunities we take to uh, promote the ideas that are under consideration and the more access the public has to those ideas, mm -hmm. um, the, the more successful the process is. So, uh, you know, as a, as a member of the planning board, I'd be interested keenly in what the options are that they're thinking about. So um, if, if that was, and the public has an opportunity to see it a, a second time, if you advertise it here um, briefly, yeah. what the choices are, what the factors are, and who's who uh, may be promoting them, what their interests are for the town, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely will. If I could um, just add, um, I, a question I've heard in the community is, do you have a timeline for when you'll make your recommendations to the selectmen? Is it by the spring or? Well, we just met once, and the yeah. general timeline, as I understand it, is, um, and it's all very flexible because of construction needs, uh, things that we don't know, X factors with the construction. Um, and then other issues a school might have with um, their their logistics, but basically we're looking to meet with people, have our forums through uh, December of this year, uh, try to and get professional feedback about what we can and cannot do. Similar to uh, um, the PBC committee that had existed, we have some information from that committee, some information from the library and uh, new information as we, we look into more uses, what we can and cannot do. Um, 
and so we're looking at perhaps coming up with a suggestion for town meeting, uh, which was you know in March, no, May. February, May. May. And um, so uh, that's the idea because then we'd have to maybe ask for money or look for funding uh, along the way. And if it if we can't do that by this year, um, then there's a chance that we need to look at a cost of well, what do we do if we move out of that building? What does it cost us to keep it? From falling apart, uh, what does it cost to operate the building? Is an empty building, and we'll have that number in advance of, of that sure. decision. So um, it's in place. Any other questions? Any other items for discussion? And a motion to adjourn. I'll make you a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.